would like to point out ahead of time that only most of these are romances. Hello my lovely friends, it's Margaret. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming at you with another recommendations video. So the humans in my fabling game have to read one contemporary every single month, so I figured I'd help them out by dusting off some of my favorite books from my contemporary shelf. If you don't know what fabling is, it doesn't matter, you don't need to to watch the rest of this video, but I will have the information link down in the description box along with timestamps for each of the books that I talk about. I have recommendations here spanning all of the major categories. I've got some middle grade, got some YA, got some adults, so let's get into it. The first book we'll be talking about is I Can Make This Promise by Christine Day. This is about Edie. She is a young Native American girl and she thinks that her mom has zero connections, like doesn't even know who their tribe was because her mom was adopted out. But then Edie one day while in the attic looking around with some friends, she finds a picture of a woman who looks exactly like Edie. And that kind of starts to raise some questions about whether or not her parents have told her the whole truth. She's also going through some friendship changes, some growing pains because she's 12 and discovering new things about herself. This is a fantastic coming of age story. Edie is dealing with the fact that her parents may not always be right. And also she's dealing with some like friendship stuff that is going on. She's growing up. She and her friends are growing apart. Different things are starting to come forward and Edie is struggling with a lot of that. Edie is a wonderfully layered character. We get to go through this whole journey with her while she's dealing with kind of coming to terms with these new this new information that she's getting about her parents about her friends she's starting to grapple with some of her identity she's realizing that some of the things that she didn't think were important to her might actually be important to her she's also developing the interests that she's had I also think that this follows a very important part of indigenous history. If you'd like to know more about that, um, I could definitely point you in the way of some resources, but I don't want to get into specifics for people who haven't read the book because it may spoil certain plot developments. The second book that I want to talk about for our middle grade one is Other Words From Home by Jasmine Warda. This is about Judah and she is a Syrian girl who has to leave um, her father and her brother behind so that she and her mom can come to the United States and stay with family during the unrest in Syria. There's a lot there that I'm not going to get into. Again, that's something that you can look to, into on your own uh, to learn more about the context of this story. So Judah comes over here. She's trying to fit in in her new class. She's trying to fit in despite the fact that she does not speak English very well and she wants to be in the school play. This is such a heartwarming book. It did something that is not easy to do and that is it almost made me cry. I am not a crier. I've never been a crier but occasionally you will have that one book in a blue moon that makes me think that if I was a crier I would be sobbing my eyes out. That gets it five stars right there. Just so well done. It is a book in verse so if those are your thing definitely check it out. I ended up listening to it as an audiobook so I actually had no idea it was a book in verse until I was like I have to buy myself a copy. It was so good I was I went on and bought a copy for myself before I finished the book. This is very much about family and growing up and kind of that struggle that I think everyone has between wanting to like fit in but also staying true to yourself. Um, and I just, it's really a good book and I highly recommend you check it out. Moving on to the YA section, I wanna talk about I'll Be The One by Lila Lee. This is about Skye and she enters in this K-pop competition. Skye has ruffled a few feathers because not only is she entering into the singing portion of the contest, she is actually doing a double competition where she's doing singing and dance because she is actually a very good dancer even though a lot of people discount her because of her size. She doesn't care, she loves herself, she wants people to accept her as she is the way that she has accepted herself and so she just goes into this competition with a big middle finger to anyone who thinks that she shouldn't be in it because of her size because she clearly has a skill. There's drama because people are people and, and people are dumb. Uh, there's also a little bit of romance with one of the fellow contestants and it's just sweet and fun and makes you feel like you're full of sunshine and rainbows. That's how, that, that's how I felt when I finished it. I think that this is definitely important representation that we are getting here. I don't think we have enough fat MCs who are comfortable in their body. Like we, a lot of the time you'll see the plot where it's like they're learning to love themselves, they're learning to be comfortable. We very much start this story with a character who occasionally does like have some insecurities occasionally, but she's very sure in her self-worth and very, very happy with who she is and loves herself as she is. That's just a very important message and I don't think that plus size teens get told that often enough. I will say the fat phobic characters like will make you want to set something on fire. They say some very hurtful stuff. Her mom is also very well-meaning but hurtful and so there's a whole there's a whole journey that happens there with her mom but I loved it. It's fun. It's cute. There are some serious moments we really get to dig into 
some of society's really toxic standards when it comes to beauty. But uh, at the end of the day, none of that matters because who you are as a person is the most important thing. The next book we're talking about is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. This is my favorite so far of Nicola Yoon's book. This is about Natasha and Daniel. Natasha and her family are being deported in the morning and Daniel is getting ready to go to a Harvard interview even though he doesn't really want to go to Harvard. I think it's Harvard. Is it Harvard? It doesn't specify, but he's going to one of the Ivy League colleges or trying to get into one of the Ivy League colleges to please his parents. Anyways, these two meet and Daniel finds out that Natasha doesn't believe in true love. So he's like, I can get you to fall in love with me in 24 hours. Real bold there, Daniel. Real bold, sir. It's just them going about the day in New York City as Natasha is trying to get a judge to stay her family's deportation because this is where her life is. She's about to graduate from high school. She has plans here for college and she just does not want to go back to Jamaica and have to uproot her entire life. I love this. This does a really interesting thing with the points of view where we have Natasha and Daniel and then we will occasionally get snippets from other characters that interact with them throughout the day. The way that that was put in and done was really clever in my opinion. I really enjoyed like the final effect that that had especially when you like like just the way that that impacts the ending was just so wonderful. I had so much fun with that. I thought that was a really like realistic look at teen infatuation like yes it happens over 24 hours but the way that we spend time with these two characters you really can kind of buy the fact that they fall for each other by the end of the day and that this is going to be devastating for them um when they have to part because Natasha is leaving the country. I thought that that was handled well. I also thought that the way that things wrap up was a good like just a fantastic choice on the author's part again trying not to spoil too much but like it it went about how you would expect this plot to go basically is what I'm saying. The final book for the YA category is going to be Save the Date by Morgan Matson. So this is about Charlie and one of her older siblings is getting married and she is trying to kind of make this wedding perfect because this wedding is the last event that is going to be happening in this big house that her family owned that they grew up in her entire life she and her family have been kind of the stars of this comic strip that her mom writes for the funny papers think for better or for worse if you've ever if you know what that comic is i, I might be dating myself with that one this is really fun if you like a plot where everything goes wrong where we're just we're just dealing with like a comedy of errors where she is trying charlie is trying so hard to to get things to go well to get them to go to plan and things just keep like just stuff keeps coming up like either personal stuff or something will be wrong with like the catering or something like that and the fact that so much happens to this family in like 24 to 48 hours like it's just over the course of a weekend and Charlie has to deal with so much and yet it is so just like yeah that's that's about how a wedding goes yeah that makes sense it just it's delightful i really liked the family dynamics and some of the things that end up being tackled throughout this book there's definitely a conversation about the exploitation of family um especially when you have a family that is very very famous or mildly famous i guess in this family's case it also is not just like light fluffy and cute there are some real serious moments there are some things that charlie is kind of struggling with she is the last in the family and she's off to college and she doesn't know what that's gonna mean for her family afterwards and like there's so much like she's just trying so hard to keep her family together because she feels like when she goes to college like it's all gonna go moving on to my adult picks we have such a fun age by kylie reed this is about amira and alex amira is a young black woman who is Alex's babysitter. She watches Alex's three-year-old Briar and it, it follows the aftermath of an event that happens at the supermarket where Amira has taken Briar to the supermarket late at night because Alex wanted Briar out of the house because of certain things that had happened. Some well-meaning white woman looks at Amira and this little white girl and decides that obviously Amira must have kidnapped her. She can't possibly be the girl's nanny like she's saying. So that ends up being caught on video and that video does eventually get out. And there is very little setup like we literally open with Alex calling Amira and being like, hey, can you come get my daughter? Something has happened at home and we would very much like her out of the house for a little bit. This is a page turner. It will have you so invested in what is going on. Like you're, 
you're going to be slightly worried for Amira through some of this, like just, just a little bit worried. Um, but also sitting there trying to be like, what the heck is going on in Alex's head? I thought that Amira was very relatable as, an, as a main character. She's like 25. She's graduated college but doesn't quite know what she wants to do with her life. Like she just went to college because that's what her family told her to do. And I found that just so like, yeah, yeah that's, that's how, that's, we, we make 18 year olds choose what they're doing with the rest of their life at 18 or 20 and that's that's way too early to choose that for some people. I also really liked how it kept you engaged and the way that different elements of the plot were balanced and woven together to really just kind of make this whole just mess that everything leads up to. Like there's so much going on in this book. There are so many awkward situations and other things and it's just it's it's a book. The next one that we're going to talk about is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This is about Stella and Michael. Stella is autistic and she has not been successful in her last couple of relationships and so she goes, you know what, what I need to do with relationships is I need to practice being in a relationship and practice specifically the sex part because none of her partners have liked the sex part with her. So she hires Michael who is a male escort to kind of help her get more comfortable with being in a relationship, practice that, and also get more comfortable with sexual situations. And this little kind of romance goes from there. It is such a wonderful book. If you are looking for own voices, autistic representation, the, the main character, the main character, I mean, she is the main character because she's the one that wrote the book, but the author, Helen Huang, is autistic. She was diagnosed very late in life. And so we see various parts of her experience with autism throughout the entire series. She does a really good job of like, tackling it from different angles but every single one of her books does have an autistic main character and I know that that's like really important to a lot of people. Um, also Stella and Michael's relationship is just so sweet and all wholesome and cute and like there are other things that end up being tackled in their lives like outside of the relationship. There's a lot that's going on. There's some stuff about like office harassment. Um, there's some stuff about you know like money and poverty and like you know, it just, just a medical, uh, our, our healthcare system. It's just really well balanced between their personal lives and then also them being in this relationship where they are pretending to be bro girlfriend and boyfriend because Stella is paying him to be her boyfriend. It also, speaking of their personal lives, has some fantastic side characters. Like, Michael's family is just probably the highlight of the book, honestly, outside of the, the romance and the relationship. Like, he's just, they're just like, they are fantastic. They are so wild. Um, like they are all different people and they all make his headache in different ways, even though he does absolutely adore all of them. Um, I just like, it's sweet. It's cute. It's wonderful. And you should read it. And the last book that we have for the adult section is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is such a fun book. Oh my god so this is about chloe brown and she has a near-death experience and decides that she is going to make a list and get a life she's going to move out of her parents house she is going to do things she's never done and it's just like i love it so much um chloe is chronically ill she's had um i believe it's fibromyalgia but basically she's been dealing with chronic pain for many many years at this point and she has kind of settled into a routine and she's re she realizes in this experience that she doesn't like the routine so she moves out and then she enlists the handyman at her new flat red to help her complete this list that she has created because he has a motorcycle and wears leather jackets which obviously makes him a very bad bad boy because leather isn't extremely useful if you accidentally wreck your motorcycle and specifically coming from the chronic illness portion because there were definitely moments obviously I am not dealing with what she's dealing. I don't have chronic pain issues, none of that. But there were a couple of moments where like she was weighing the options in what other people's reactions, specifically family re reactions would be. And I was like, this feels familiar. It also has a fantastic, like just adorable, like their relationship is so wonderful and sweet and wholesome. And I also think that this does something which is very, we don't see a lot in fiction because we see a lot of fiction that explores women dealing with abusive relationships and healing from the trauma that comes from that. And in this one, it is the man that we are seeing have to figure out how do I become a happier, healthier person now that I am out of this relationship? How do I carry on? 
um, having to deal with like the ramifications of having someone who is very toxic and abusive in their life. And I just, I, I think that that's important. And I think we should see more of that in fiction. If you're feeling chatty and you have some recommendations based on what you saw up here that you think I would like, go ahead and leave your recommendations down in the description below. No, the comments, in the comments. If you are not feeling chatty, but you wanna let me know that you watched to the end of the video, go ahead and leave me a little car emoji since we are dealing with the modern day. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you enjoyed this video, you might like some of the ones over here. I'll have the Fade One playlist up here just in case you're interested, and then whatever is newest on my channel down here. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading, and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye! Now, while this... Right, so let's go ahead and end this.